But uh, speaking of other countries, uh, one big thing that UK has over the USA is the fact that there are more adherents to homeopathy in the UK per capita than the USA. Do you find that disturbing, answers in books? Um, I find it saddening more than disturbing. Uh, I've been having discussions with various people about all sorts of things and homeopathy has cropped up. Um, a lot of people have made the point that homeopaths tend to be middle-aged and looking for some way of helping people. They'll go on online or wherever, look for a way that they can uh, help the sick, help the needy, and uh, they'll discover that becoming a doctor is out, becoming a nurse is out, uh, doing a lot of the things that you would automatically recognise is out. However, becoming a homeopath takes at best you know a few days of powerpoint slides and uh three star hotel right. and uh you end up with a certificate and you're then a homeopath and as long as you buy into this thing you're helping people yeah uh richard dawkins i can't remember the document uh the uh episode he was doing it for but went to an actual physician's office who was a practicing homeopath who had given up his medical practice in order to be a homeopath. And he said that this works better than his traditional medicine. He said the patients respond better. And he said there's just no reason for him to go back to the traditional medicine. Uh, do you find that's becoming more and more popular in the UK, that traditional medicine people are going to homeopaths? Um, I'm not not sure that it's uh, becoming more common for trained doctors to give up and become homeopaths but uh, our National Health Service does support uh, I think at least one if not several homeopathic hospitals uh, where I think that this uh, Dawkins uh, documentary took place I think it was uh, Enemies of Reason um, he visited homeopathic hospital in London, I believe. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, there is this slant to complementary medicines. So the National Health Service will be there and they'll give you everything uh, that's evidence-based and is actually going to help you. But then they'll also get you access to all the placebos that you could ever wish for. <laughs> so... There's an you interesting know, I, term for it. <laughs> well, that's all it is. <laughs> yeah, that that's the thing. I I think that I have no problem with people having a placebo. You know, I think that it could be very useful to, for someone um, suffering with an illness if they can have a placebo and it work for them. Then that's brilliant. Uh, the only thing that worries me is is that taxpayers in the UK, for example, are having to pay millions of pounds for homeopaths and various other groups when in fact you could easily give GPs the power to say okay we're not entirely sure how this uh, drug works or how this pill works but it's been shown to be effective for a group of people with your symptoms uh, if you're willing to give it a go it's a bit expensive but we'll write that off and just go and have your prescription and I'm, from all the information that I have about placebos, that should be just as effective as a homeopath, acupuncture, any other number of things without any of the uh, potential side effects of things like acupuncture or uh, chiropractors. Right. Now, uh, I took a course in college where they had to explain you know, how drug trials undergo here and one of the things you have to do when you're getting people into a drug trial is you have to explain to them that they may be receiving a placebo which is just a simple sugar pill but they won't know which one they're receiving mm -hmm. from what I understand from all the homeopathic papers I've read where they've done trials they just give them homeopathic preparations there's absolutely no controls no placebos made so they don't explain to people that all they're really getting is the sugar pill or this lactose pill I don't see the 
ethical merits to such a trial, but homeopaths defend these papers to the to the bone. Do you see any other issues that can arise, especially in the UK, where it's getting such government support that soon we won't even have the ethics in medicine because homeopaths are taking over? Um, not for some time. I think homeopaths are still on the fringe, and uh, quite luckily there is a growing vocal group of uh, sceptics or uh, people who live in the real world and realise this doesn't work and uh, are speaking out about it. Um, so it would take quite some time for uh, ethics and things to... Uh, ooh, I'm getting some getting feedback. Some feedbacks. That's from you, Chris. That's from... Hello? Hey. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to go check on lunch. I'm sorry. Hold on. Uh, right. James is going to... Uh, sorry. Yeah, I'll um, take over. Sorry. So, um, who is echoing? Oh, I don't think it's anyone now, actually. Um, it was, it you was, was there. You were, you were saying answers. Um, yes, so I was saying that I think that it would be quite some time before uh, homeopaths can destroy actual medicine uh, with their with their ridiculous practices and concepts of science. Um, I think that it's probably its most dangerous element at the moment is the fact that people can trust it over science-based medicine uh, for things like when they go abroad. Uh, there's been uh, quite a number of instances of people taking uh, anti-malaria homeopathic uh, remedies before they travel to malaria-stricken countries believing that this will protect them and uh, obviously it doesn't so i think that i that's... don't i don't know if you've seen the uh, have you seen the newsnight clip where um the leader of the british society of homeopaths or i can't remember the exact name of the organization was being grilled on whether or not they should be providing uh, anti malarial medication unfortunately I think no she... i haven't it's, the clip is on youtube but it's uh, the um they're basically the homeopath's response is that they should uh, customers should be made entirely aware that it is an unproven medication that it is not shown to have any effects but still homeopaths are still prescribing this stuff and creating the illusion that um, it is effective and that it will prevent them from getting malaria yeah well I, I think that uh, you know if you wanted to do such a thing because in the UK we have uh, on, on packets of cigarettes say you have pictures and warnings of the dangers of smoking so you'll have smoking uh, kills written on a packet of cigarettes uh, along with a picture of lung cancer uh, cancerous tumors being taken out or what have you in order to get the message across to people that this this is what's going to happen to you and I think that similar yeah. similar statements should be put on not pictures you don't need pictures of people who died of malaria but just <laughs> just just a simple but something saying this doesn't work saying yeah that this is not a proven medication if you have a genuine problems see a gp <laughs> mm. something like that at least then it would be explicit and it would be down to people's choice uh, to uh, waste their time and money 